Hi there. Uh, this is a uh, kind of follow-up live session with um, Jens Schumacher. Hi, Jens, again. Hello. Um, and Jens is going to show us a bit around in uh, Stash, actually, and uh, show us what this is about. And as I am not a developer, and uh, you, you may experience me asking some very silly questions, please excuse that. But I'm pretty sure that um, I guess it's going to do a, uh, going to be doing a good job at uh, making up for my silly questions. So um, Jens, uh, show us a bit around in Stash. What is that? Okay, so I'm going to start on our dog food server, and since this is under heavy development, there might be some rough edges here, but I'm going to show you anyway. So we start with the administration. So this is the Stash administration. Um, and for those of you who missed that from, from the other uh, video, Stash is a Git repository management tool and, and provides uh, not only permissions and authentications, uh, authentication on top of Git, uh, but also collaboration layer. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But let's start with the administration. So what do you see here? You see uh, the users. So those are all the registered users and groups. You see the global permissions. Uh, we can click on this real quick and you can see who actually has access to the instance. So that's the, the number one requirements. And you have different permission levels. So you have a system administrator, those are the people who can install plugins and configure the server and um, have really the highest level of permissions. Then you have administrators who can um, administrate most of the settings in the administration, but they don't have access to functions that can exact this, uh, um, affect the server itself. And then you have project creators, and that's important because project creators allow you to create new projects and therefore also repositories. So what you can do as a user or as an administrator, that you can delegate the project creation to other users in your organization so that it, the administrator is no longer the bottleneck. And then, of course, you have stash users as well. And you can apply those permissions to users and, of course, groups as well. OK. So that's uh, this level. And then you have um, other things you can connect to your user directory, whether it uses um, Active Directory or Crowd or LDAP or Jira. Uh, you can configure mail server for all the email notifications that Stash sends out. You can set up a database. Uh, and we support uh, Postgres and MySQL and Oracle. So everything that's supported by the other applications as well. And then the server settings. So here's where you configure SSH and other server settings. And of course, you can um, link to other applications. So for example, if you link Stash to Jira, then you will automatically get the link between issues and commits uh, that you know potentially from Fisheye. Right. So in Jira, we will show all the commits that are related to a particular issue. So remote then, issue linking is that in Jira, correct? Do you, exactly. Um, did you um, program on top of um, the uh, kind of the Atlassian uh, architecture, um, like uh, so I can have every database, I can run on Windows and Linux, um, and all this stuff. Yeah, so part of this comes from uh, um, from the Atlassian platform. Those are a, a bunch of frameworks and tools that we use internally. So the user management is part of that uh, way we have a common platform across all the different applications. Um, and the database, uh, not so much. It's sli uh, slightly different in the different applications. But yeah, we use a lot of talk on a common uh, platform uh, frameworks for Stash, okay. which definitely helps us to get started faster. So yeah. uh, how do I use as a um, common Stash user um, um, this interface here? Yeah. So if you come in as a new user, let's say you, you haven't done anything, you, you come here and you first of all, of all you can look at the different projects that are available in your Stash instance. So in this case, we can take a look at Confluence. They just recently moved to Stash, so they're still getting used to it. They have two projects, Team Calendar and Confluence in here. So you can click through to Confluence, and then you can see uh, all the files that are part of this repository. So now you can um, either explore them, like manually, or you can use the, the find file function as well, which allows you to uh, search for, uh, let's say, user management. Um, and you can find all the files uh, that, that start with user management, for example. Right? Mm -hmm. um, or space manager. Uh, we find all the, the space manager files. And you can quickly navigate 
to one of the files to to look at the source code, uh, look at the, the history of the file as well. So that's the 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 source browsing experience, right? So you can quickly quickly look at the diff to the previous version um, and and see what happens. In this case, there's I think not much of the history, so there's only one uh, file, but sometimes it's a bit more interesting. And, um, so that's the basic source code browsing, and of course you can switch between the different branches, and the component has a lot of different branches to, to choose from. So the second part is the commits, and the commits tab shows you what's actually happening in the repository. So here you can uh, can see all the commits that ha happened yesterday or a few days ago, um, and there's of course a, a keyword navigation that allows you to quickly navigate through it, and um, as you can see there are a few commits um, a little like tra more transparent, a little bit faded out, and that's because they're merges. So hold, we, we hold, hold on. merges are not that important. Hold on yeah. a, a second. Actually, um, uh, for those people watching the video, it's not Jens fault that we only see um, this lag. I I am pretty sure that Stash is pretty fast, but this um, go to meeting uh, connection only shows us uh, a couple of frames. Actually, when, when you're talking. It's it's taking yeah. a bit of time um, for um, the screen uh, to show what you're talking about, and it, it swallows some of the things. But just go on. It, I think for for the developers, it's going to be uh, the right thing. Uh, they won't uh, care if they can't see everything. So uh, it's. I just wanted to point out that this is rather a connection problem that uh, than a starch problem. Okay, um, and I see these pull requests. Yeah. So this is the feature that we introduced with Stash 1.3. Um, so in this case, you can see the 12 open pull requests. There um, is a merge tab as well, so you can see all existing pull requests that have already been merged, um, and then and declined as well, because maybe the pull request wasn't valid or wasn't good enough, so you can decline a pull request and say, hey, I want to merge those changes into master. Um, what you see here is, well, pull request has an ID, the title, has an author, um, as well as reviewers. And for the reviewers, you can also see whether all the reviewers approved the pull request or not. Right? This is the little green tick. Um, and then you can see where the pull request comes from, which branch, and where it will be merged into. That's the destination. This is not that was one. And then, of course, the, the last data date there. So if we uh, drill into one of the pull requests, let's see if we find something interesting. Can I um, uh, name who should be the reviewers, or do they uh, come there on their own, or how do I get them? No, so you can name the reviewers. That was not a very interesting pull request. You could find uh, a different one where there actually a few comments. Um, this is a bit more interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so you can edit this pull request, and here you can define who is the reviewer. So I can. Uh, um, at Stefan, for example, uh, to, to the pull request and say, I want him to review the poll. In this case, Stefan would get email notifying him that he was uh, chosen to be a reviewer, and then they should take a look at this. Um, so another thing you see here is that this pull request can't be merged. So Stash will automatically check if this pull request can actually be merged or not, and if it can't be merged, uh, then we tell the user what they can do. So basically, they will have to um, uh, resolve those merge clicks on the command line and then, um, or locally, and then push those changes to the branch so you don't have that merge conflict anymore, right? So there's a description, and here you can also see this. Uh, this one actually has been approved, the pull request, um, and there are a number of comments. In this case, uh, it was updated before it was approved with probably some changes that uh, the viewers requested. You can see the uh, commits, it was one before. Um, and here you can see an inline uh, enlightenment. So in this case, this is outdated because the uh, uh, because Alex Sander um, added more reviews or added more commits, um, changed probably this part of the code. So we can take a look at the diff now and see what it actually looks like. That's cool. So I can dig into this code and comment right there where it is. Um, what I think uh, could be problematic when this check-in or um, this pull request is executed, correct? Uh, exactly, yeah. So, so in this case, I'll, I'll never have to meet anyone else. anymore. 
What's that? It's it's the developer dream come true. You you never have to meet anyone in person anymore because you can com uh, uh, collaborate so socially within the software. That's right, um, and it's fairly easy to comment. So you just like press here, uh, say this is an example comment. Please ignore. I hope the guys are not going to be angry with me. Um, they won't. Save it. Then um, it's already there. So now this will be in the FDS. Yes, well. Cool. This is the so this is the diff. You can quickly uh, select through the different files and see what has changed. And you see um, on the late CSS file, there's a merge conflict. And the the special thing about the the diff view, uh, the unique thing in in stash is that it actually shows you where those merge conflicts are. So here you can see. Uh, that's actually the merge conflict. So if you resolve the changes, you can even look in Stash to see what, what are the, the problems, and we mark them up now nicely, and you can comment then on them and say, hey, uh, can you resolve this before uh, we fix this? OK. Can, can I ask you a quick question from a non-developer? Can I um, change this there, or do I have to do a new check-in from my machine somewhere, or can I actually change the code online uh, somehow? Yeah, no, at the moment it's not possible to change the code online because uh, you actually have to um, merge, um, and this is what we displayed in, in, in here, you actually have to check out uh, mm -hmm. the branch and merge the changes into your page and then resolve that locally. So it's, it's a bit more involved. It's, in this one file where you change it up, um, it's a bit more involved. Yeah, okay. um, but that's something you might want to support in the future, but at the moment that's not possible. Yeah, okay. But we provide instructions here exactly what steps you will have to take in order to resolve that merge conflict. Um, coming back to that um, joke that I made um, uh, about not. This actually helps you with distributed teams in San Francisco and Sydney and maybe Amsterdam to um, collaborate on the code, correct? Yeah, so you can see here is now uh, my comment that I left, and the other will see the comment now to see where, where I comment, and it gives some, um, some scope as well in text and code. If I do with all the changes, I can just, I'm happy with those changes now. Mm -hmm. I can approve the code. And I get a little tick as well, and as well as an entry to keep track whether I approved it or whether I unapproved it. Okay, um, uh, there's a, a nice story also about uh, this is on t um, stash is uh, set on top of Git, correct? And uh, Git, uh, I read that on Wikipedia is uh, is actually an English term for yeah I don't know a. Um, uh, for a guy, or uh, however, uh, those people uh, knowing English very well will know what Git know, uh, means. And uh, Linus Torvalds said, "Look, I was always a bastard, so um, I named this new product project that I started after myself, and that's why it's called Git. <laughs> and uh, apart from that, it was unique and a, a Unix." Uh, uh, command that was not available, but um, so this Git could get away w with not talking to people. Just w w just uh, thought this might be um, connected here. Okay, um, so uh, what are you working on? What's the new f feature that's gonna come up in 1.8 or whatever? What you can see from from I think before it's, uh, it get to that, I think for the new uh, for new users, I just need to explain in the top right pretty okay. quick. So in the top right, you can actually see the URL that you need in order to check out that repository. You can see the repository URL, or you can clone the repository as well, and it allows you to clone it in, in source tree, which is a free Mac client that you can download in the App Store, um, or you can just use the command line to clone it as well. But this is how you get the repository. So on every Every page, uh, it's really easy for you to just grab the URL and down uh, get the repository information and uh, the repository to your local machine. Um, yeah. So what are we working on next? Um, so as you can see, there's like, at the moment you can add reviewers and they can then can merge the changes back. So everybody has this merge button here, right? 
the number one request that, that we get is that people want more control, especially if you have uh, a release branch. You don't want every user to release something or to merge changes back into the release branch and then push it on or build release automatically, right? So people want a little bit more control. They don't want everyone to merge. Um, and that's why we're currently building branch permissions. So I can't actually show you the working because uh, we don't really have the UI ready yet. Uh, but I can show you what it can look like. Um, so this is how we do our designs. And um, the, the branch permissions look something else. So you have the settings for the repository. Um, you go going to have um, a description. So you want to have branch permissions, we explain to you what branch permissions. Um, and then these are actually the permission screen. So that something along those lines is what it's going to look like. Uh, uh, so under the repository sets, you have an add permission button. You can click that add permission button to add the um, well, add branch. And here, the overview, you can see. Uh, a summary of those permissions. In this case, you have a master branch, and you have two users who have access to this, and then Schumacher. Um, and basically, the that only those people can read to that branch. It's not possible to read, but to restrict read access. It's only write access to this branch. Okay. Is, um, in this case, who has access to it? Is that um, inherited actually? Do you, um, if I can uh, merge to the master, can I then automatically also merge to everything else? Or do you have, so Jens Schumacher may on this screen merge to master. May he also merge to ref deploy and 1.2 spike? No, he can't. So in, in Git, like every branch is separate though. So there's no inheritance mm -hmm. in terms of the permission. You need to give access to each of them. And in this case, the ref expression that allows you to define a certain pattern um, of branches as well. So you could say that every branch that starts with um, release can't uh, can you can restrict those. Why? Right? Ah, cool. Branch that starts with everyone has access to that automatic. So you can um, have a pattern that matches a certain. Um, Branch name. Kind of wildcard permissions. Sounds powerful. So we, yeah, so this is the the, uh, the branch permission screen, how we imagine it at the moment. So in either select a branch, just select one that exists, and then you can add some groups to it. Um, or you can uh, choose advanced permissions. Uh, in this case, you can just provide a regular expression, uh, for example, ref slash deploy, and then give access to, to that. Just so that's what that looks like. And then there's a lot of discussion about feature at the bottom. But um, yeah, that's as much as I can show you at this stage. Cool. Um, actually, Jens, uh, thank you so much for um, taking the time, uh, showing us around a bit, and uh, sharing some new features. Um, awesome. Thanks.